G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Tuesday evening here in Australia, market down ever so slightly. So this was a 2.37 trillion yesterday, now we're down to 2.34 trillion. So, you know, a little bit of a pullback for first thing in the week, but, you know, nothing too sort of crazy. Look, Bitcoin dominance 46%, it just keeps rising. People are definitely getting more and more bullish on Bitcoin. And this is why for me, I recommend having Bitcoin. You know, there's lots of new people coming to the space and saying Bitcoin, you know, it's going to be sort of obsolete and it's going to get taken over and all this and that. <laughs> Look, one day, could Bitcoin get taken over? Absolutely. Could it be in the next, you know, couple of weeks to months? Probably not. The only coin that really stands half a chance is Ethereum. And really, Ethereum's best chance, at least in this cycle, is if you know we get to the peak and Bitcoin starts to come down and Ethereum start, you know continues to run for a while after it. But Bitcoin is the base of cryptocurrency. It really is, you know, where everything kind of starts. So for me, again, it's never financial advice, but I recommend having a minimum of thirty percent in Bitcoin. Now, again, that's just my personal recommendation. It is absolutely not financial advice. But what's happening at the moment? Look at all these altcoins. They're just generally bleeding. Not SHIB. <laughs> she ain't who doing crazy stuff still. But what's generally doing pretty good for a while? Bitcoin. Don't get me wrong. When all the altcoins start to run hard, they will run really hard. And they'll run harder than Bitcoin. But the problem is there's periods where Bitcoin runs and the altcoins don't. They kind of bleed out. They're still going all right in their dollar value but they're getting absolutely smoked in Bitcoin value. It's that whole kind of diversify, you know, theory that people out, have out there. And I agree with it. I think you should diversify. Even if you're just all in crypto and, you know, if you want to do that, that's fine. But be very careful going all into one coin or just, you know, counting out the biggest of them all. It is the biggest of them all for a reason. And again, so for me personally, you know, I've got a minimum of 30% of Bitcoin. When that gets out of whack, and like I said, that's a minimum. There's times it's more. Uh, and when it starts to get out of whack, I start to take profits from my altcoins and start to put them into Bitcoin because I don't want to have less than 30% Bitcoin. I'm happy to have more at times. And then, you know, again, when it gets down, that's when I start to change out. But that's me. But look, things starting to move all right. Gas prices come down. Again, I told you I got in the NFTs. Uh, space the other day and the gas prices immediately as that uh, project crazy skulls uh, turned on and started to mint I mean that went right up to 19 sort of $20 again that's the basic transaction that's not what you're actually paying for gas at the time all right what's done the best in the, in the last 24 hours in the top 100 we can see bitcoins at least up one percent holy moly halo platform 300 and something percent in the last 24 hours i have no idea what that's about but anyway good on anyone who's in that we'll have to wait and see how hard that may crash in the next uh 24 hours again just be careful of pump and dumps we saw what happened to bitcoin the other day on the charts there was big whale movement there this could be the same shiba inu continues to rise so again lucky anyone uh, good on anyone who's making those gains but just be careful Waves doing nice, XC Cash, Bitcoin Gold out of nowhere, 2%. So look, one absolutely astonishing uh, move. One, you know, pretty good move. And then all just kind of stock standard, you know, two in the high single digits and then everything is uh, low single digits. That's not bad considering the market is down 1.2% overall. So what hasn't fared well then? All right, stacks continuing to go down. They had a pretty good pump when everyone was talking about NFTs on Bitcoin and now they are selling off pretty hard. Our Weave, again, they've had a pretty good pump for a while. We can see a lot of the really good altcoins are just starting to bleed at the moment. Theta's down, I mean 9%, that kind of hurts. Atom, Algo, Luna, you name it. Plenty of good coins, even Chili's there. You know, we got near double digit sort of losses. And that's the problem at the moment. Bitcoin's still doing all right and starting to move, but altcoins are just starting to get shaken out. People are getting nervous and people are taking their profits out of the altcoins and they'll probably start to chase Bitcoin, which is fine. But for me, I just buy and hold 
and again, you know, I sell when the kind of time for, feels right or if there's a price that I was, you know, wanting to get. But, you know, I try to stay away from selling at a loss. I'm not saying I've never done it. But, yeah, selling at losses, you have to ask yourself what's the point. But, you know, sometimes it is the uh, right option because it's just never going to get back to the price that you bought at. But, you know, that generally says that you may have not, done enough research really but anyway moving on fair few losses there and they're pretty high uh and the gains you know one outstanding gain in the top 100 and then outside of that some kind of low single digits let's have a look at bitcoin see where it's at look at that boom and have a look at the confluence look where it is exactly you know i'm not even putting these lines in there they're already there it is sitting right here at old sort of support and resistance level, that kind of $58,000 ish level. So, you know, having a little bit of a hard time getting through it at the moment. I mean, you know, it's still early in the day. It's only just about to go nine o'clock over stateside time. So we'll have to wait and see, is this now ready to, you know, push on through or is this where we're going to get a bit of a rejection? And, you know, maybe we have to come back down and, you know, retest 52,000. Not saying we have to, again, that's all that real big whale movement there. That was, you know, killing all the longs and also you know smashing all the shorts as well at the same time uh proper whale movement hence why i say be careful with some of the altcoins because the altcoins are a lot easier to move around whales can get in there and do all sorts of stuff to the price but looking pretty good there we go just turned green hey are we about to break that fifty-eight thousand dollar mark can we get up to what's the highest it got on this wick we got to around about, oh, so I didn't even get to 58,000. It just got under. Is today the day we break 58,000? Really, once we kind of break this level, it's not going to take much at all for us to get up to 63,000. You know, that's only like a 5% move. Will it happen today? Who knows? Will it happen this week? I think there's definitely a chance, but really this is kind of that other level we've got to look out for. So just under 62,000, a very small bit of sort of confluence. You know, we can sort of go there, 61,200, 62,000 thereabouts. But really there's not a whole lot there. And if we go through that, we definitely should make it up to, you know, the old all-time high. Then the question is, do we get rejected from there or do we push through and then come back and retest? Again, we don't have to come back and retest. There's no guarantees. And there's no guarantees that we also, you know, uh, will get rejected. But I would say considering that's old all-time highs, we probably have had a few people who bought up in here. We might see a bit of resistance here uh, when we get there. But, you know, time will tell. Let's have a look at Ethereum. Whew. Look where Ethereum's at again. You know, I drew this line in. It's pulled back a little bit before, but this is the old. This is the resistance, and it's sitting just under at the moment. Really, once we go through there, there's a tiny bit here at you know, kind of four-ish thousand dollars, and then we're just off to the races, off to old all-time, uh, off to new all-time highs. So again, kind of similar to Bitcoin uh, in a sense very very close and we're just waiting there's a couple of resistance points so we're just under one which again is at that three thousand you know five hundred forty ish dollar level let's say three thousand five hundred fifty then we have a tiny bit here up at sort of three thousand nine hundred we'll round it down this time and then after that yep we are off but again what i really want to focus on is according to this trend line that i've put in now, this trend line's not exact. This is just something that I've had in place for quite some time. Sorry, there we go. Ethereum, to me, actually looks undervalued. This is the you know fair value line that I've put through there. It's just where we got a fair bit of confluence. Again, you can move this uh, down a little bit if you want and say that maybe it's sitting at about fair value. You know, some people might move it up ever so slightly, so it's running right through the middle but thereabouts, but for me, I think Ethereum looks like it's a pretty good buy. And hence why I'm really focusing on Bitcoin mainly at the moment, but a little bit of Ethereum as well, because I don't think Ethereum is going to play like the other altcoins at the moment. I think Ethereum is very similar to Bitcoin. And I've got some interesting stories coming up on that. All right, 
here's something interesting. Despite the recent surge, retail FOMO is actually absent from Bitcoin's current run. Yeah, the people who FOMO, they kind of get in and get out and they just can't handle, you know, the ups and the downs. They can only handle the ups and as soon as it goes down, they're out, out i.e. retail. Now, again, me and you can be considered retail. Well, we are considered retail, but we're not the, you know, the silly retail. We've hopefully been here for a while and understand cycles and how things works. Because the Google Trends data shows that worldwide Bitcoin and buy Bitcoin searches are now are still far behind the yearly peak. So again, earlier in the year when things were doing uh, really well. So let's say back in sort of, you know, February through to about May. That's when, you know, all this FOMO stuff was going on. And again, we're up at those prices, but people got in here, unfortunately. Then it dropped. They panic sold, sold at a loss. Hence why I said I really don't like to sell at losses. And then they've missed out on all this and they're not going to pay any attention. They've probably forgotten about Bitcoin and crypto. And the next thing is they're going to get back in when they hear it's, you know, probably not even at old all-time highs. Unfortunately, when it's 80, 100,000, they're going to go, oh my God, I should have got in, I made a mistake. But this time I'm going to get it right, buying it again at old all time, at new all-time highs. And then it dumps and again, they'll probably sell for a loss. Hopefully they don't do that too many times, but that's the, the new money. I don't like to call it, you know, dumb money and, you know, retail money. That's basically everyone un other than institutions, but that's really what they consider uh, anything outside of institutions is retail money but it's that new money that push things really high and then unfortunately uh, they get burnt but hopefully they learn their lesson uh, is what I would hope so anyway Ethereum and Bitcoin not looking too bad at the moment not too far off old old time highs and maybe getting ready to go into price discovery will it happen this week though I don't know I think we definitely get up to the old all time highs whether we bust through them this week or not, that'll be the interesting question. All right, FTX launches Solana NFT marketplace in the United States. So any NFT pieces or collections on the new platform must be on the Solana blockchain at the moment. So that's the only issue I see with it. Solana you know, seems to be a pretty good project. I bought in, it's only gone down since I bought in, but that's the way. Now, however, they are, there are also plans to support Ethereum-based tokens, which are the industry, industry standard. And this is true. You know, the, most of the really, really good NFTs are on Ethereum. They're not on Solana. I'm not saying there's none on Solana. There's definitely some. You've got you know, your board Ape Yacht Clubs and things like that. I think that's what this is. Uh, Degen Ape. There we go. But Ethereum still where it's at. All these other side chains, and I've said this before. That's what I really think they're all going to be. You know, Polkadot and you know, Solana and you name it. Whatever ones survive, they will be a side chain for Ethereum. Everything will probably, you know, in my personal opinion, not financial advice, go back to Ethereum. They really are the core of where smart contracts are at. Bitcoin will still be sort of you know the core currency, like the gold. Uh, but of the you know the new digital age and Ethereum will be that sort of base layer of where all the contracts uh, eventually come back to. That's how I see it anyway. So you know whether that plays out in the future, we'll have to wait and see. But you know Solana only at the moment, and we know uh, FTX they've gone heavy into Solana. So we go down here and it says. Now, this is also interesting. So the marketplace will take a 2% fee from both the buyer and the seller for each sale or trade, along with a $1 fee to mint or list NFT. So they're not going to miss you with their fees at all. I mean, I'm sure OpenSea's probably got something similar going on, but that is pretty steep. So 2%, so it's 4% minimum from every sale they're getting because it's the seller and the buyer, they're taking 2% from each, so that makes 4%. And then a dollar, any any time anyone wants to mint or list an NFT. So again, I mean, imagine there's probably going to be hundreds, if not thousands of NFTs uh, listed, you know, quite regularly if this grows to as big as OpenSea. That's a lot of money, NFT, uh, 
FTX stand to make. Now, all tokens on the platform will be using the Metaplex Solana protocol, which means that it is unlikely that they will be compatible for other leading marketplaces unless they integrate the technology. But again, they're already looking to build a bridge to Ethereum, and that's the main one. So whether they have, you know, Binance Smart Chain or, you know, any other chain on there probably won't matter too much at the moment and you know should other chains nft projects really start to blow up then i'm sure they will uh you know build a bridge but at the moment they're solely focusing on solana with ethereum to come in you know who knows at what stage but it is coming now this is the part that some people won't like though but it's part of you know the space particularly in the united states due to u.s regulations fdx has also stri also has stringent know your customer requirements or KYC. NFT trading, which are not required on other marketplaces such as OpenSea. You just hook up your MetaMask uh, and you're good to go there. And this may deter uh, artists and people from using it. But you know, regulation is coming, like it or not, and OpenSea may face issues that they will have to KYC in the not too distant future. You know, maybe not, but yeah. It's the new world. That's just the way things are going to go. I think KYC will be on just about everything and anything that doesn't have it is just going to have a really hard time trying to navigate around the, the regulations. The site itself, you know, if you have a sort of what they call, you know, a decentralized site, then yeah, it's hard for the regulators to do anything to that site because it's the... Uh, decentralized sorry but it's where the money goes on and off and comes in and out you know it's the the dollars turning into cryptos that they're going to trace that stuff back from there and it'll just be very hard to get back into dollars which is where most people live uh in this day and age now that may change in the future but we're nowhere near that yet and i think yeah regulation will be at the forefront uh for you know projects to really survive in the next decade i think anyway after that you know we'll have to wait and see maybe people you know again the, the gen what's the new gen the gen z's coming through you know they probably will completely disagree with that and then you know they get into parliament and start to make new laws and all the rest of it but uh yeah the next decade or two i can't see that changing i think you know again kyc will be high on the agenda for any project to survive all right, Ripple teams with uh, Nelnet on $44 million solar investment. So this is actually pretty smart from Ripple because they have lots of rules about, you know, things being green. And I mean, Ripple's already green. They, they minted all their coins. So their carbon footprint, footprint is very, very minimal. But, you know, if anything other than a little bit of electricity... But they're getting into solar because number one, there's a ton of money to be made in green energy. There really is. But also, it makes them. Uh, what's the? Oh, you got to be green energy compliant. I can't remember the name now. It's absolutely killing me. My memory is terrible at the moment. Uh, there's some kind of agreement that everyone has to get on board. I can't remember what it is, but it's basically to be carbon neutral, or otherwise, if you're not carbon neutral, you pay money for. Uh, every little bit that you're not carbon neutral so number one ripples getting on top of that uh number two it looks really good uh for them moving forward and number three solar there's tons and tons of money to be made again in green and green energy so ripple this is a very smart move 44 million dollars really isn't a whole lot for them but it'll be interesting to see how well that 44 million dollars does for them in the future are uh, the carbon tax that's what it is there's a name for it but i just can't think of what it is off the top of my head at the moment what a time to forget something like that all right bitsmart construction of mega bitcoin uh, mining farm in argentina so again it's hard to think that we're getting ready to go into some you know bear market when you know they're building these mega bitcoin farms and again do you think it's really going to get regulated you know to infinite you know to oblivion and all the rest of it it's just not going to happen and like i said i think a lot of countries are gonna you know put on this big show and make it look like you know there's possibilities that things are going to get banned similar to india like india were really sort of anti-crypto but i think they've all seen this coming for a long time and they've just been putting it off for as long as they can and now they've put on a bit of a you know 
show for everyone to make it look like they're not going to let it happen but knowing full well that they can't really stop it from here they can regulate it though they absolutely can but trying to stop it too hard and now all these big companies again throwing you know silly amounts of money into it so the facility which is designed to accommodate 55,000 miners will be finished by next year the farm will be constructed in warehouses inside the power company providing the energy so I think this is where you're going to see a lot of integration you know there's wherever there's excess energy around the world I think you're going to find Bitcoin uh, mines you know Bitcoin farming going on there you know even in the oil industry they've got lots of uh, excess energy happening there and many other sectors all around the world Bitcoin again I, I really do think Bitcoin's going to be massive personal opinion only and again anywhere where you can find excess energy I think that is going to be put towards you know Bitcoin mining and you know solar power and you know all sorts of things green energy but particularly Bitcoin mining because you can't really turn uh, excess energy into more green energy it's usually just excess energy but you can find a way to put it to good use uh, and I think Bitcoin mining is where it's going to be at last but not least institutional crypto products I record uh, AUM as investors pile into Bitcoin so assets under management institutional investors piled 225 million into Bitcoin products while ether products saw outflows of 13.6 million in the past week and again that's because the altcoin space is all slow slowing down at the moment and Bitcoin's get looks like anyway it's gearing up to get on a big run and the institutions have probably seen that and gone rightio we need to get back on board you know with the Bitcoin and don't get me wrong once Bitcoin starts to peter out you'll see this change and then it'll be they'll be back into Ethereum and other things that is you know how these markets are going to work but don't get me wrong when they buy they're probably only going to trade you know maybe 15% of what they buy they're going to wait to buy the dips and then again they're going to get into you know the good projects and they're going to hold most of it and then trade only a little bit of it that is what smart money you know institutions you know billionaires and soon to be trillionaires and that do they really don't sell a whole lot the only time they sell is if there's something better to go and chase again they'll take some profits you know you buy Bitcoin at let's say 10,000 it gets to a hundred thousand well is there something else now that you could take just some of those profits get your initial 10,000 back so you, you sell a tenth and put it into something else I don't know if there is anything better out there but you can go through the crypto market and you can see there's a ton of things that have outperformed Bitcoin at times not always again there's times like now where Bitcoin's generally outperforming most things and vice versa and Bitcoin's you know exponential gains they are going to come to an end I would say sometime in the next 10 years I think we've still probably got you know another five to ten years of crazy gains again people talking Bitcoin may be going to ten million dollars or more not too many talk people talking about ten million in this kind of cycle but they definitely think 10 million it's 1 to 10 million anyway in the next sort of 10 to 20 years so there's still some exponential gains there but if Bitcoin does that imagine what some of these altcoins are going to do hence why I say you get to you know you buy Bitcoin for 10,000 gets to a hundred thousand you know it, it's still your choice you've got to decide what you want to do but why wouldn't you maybe take your money back or you know put that towards a house or something else or see if you can find you know the next new big crypto to put ten thousand dollars into or ten different cryptos and a thousand dollars into each whatever way you want to do it again the rich they really don't sell a hot a whole lot they do on occasions but more so they generally just borrow against what they've got to go and buy new things so if you really want to make it you know in the financial system yeah, you've got to find you've got to not completely copy because a lot of the way things have been done has been done based on the old way things are changing but it won't change that much the rich will still not sell until it's again whatever they've bought is no longer you know the apex predator as uh, Michael Saylor calls it and I think Bitcoin's you know got a long long time before it's no longer that kind of apex predator but then after that again people will just you know they'll go down the rabbit hole and they'll start to chase you know the next Ethereum and the next Solana and the next Avalanche and all that and that is where the gains will be made but they again then 
they're unlikely to take all of their Bitcoin and just start throwing it into random things. That is that core store of wealth. But on occasions, most likely going to take some profits here and there and try to find the next big investment. All right, that's it from me. Bit of a late one tonight. Do apologize, but I've got a job. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. You should be. And I'll see you next time.